This video is sponsored by Right on Trek. So now one of the big things I've thought about when I've gone over different backpacking gear lists and you know in the cards here are some videos I've done of that, specifically the most value gear list, is that total price for that um, gear list came to somewhere around $800 or so. And I had someone tell me, you know what would be a really good idea is to actually set a limit of $500 for a beginner's backpacking gear list. The reason is $500 is kind of that sweet spot where a lot of people feel like they could invest that much if they think they're going to like a hobby. And it's something where once you start going over $500, people start tuning you out. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead with this exercise and think about what would be a great budget backpacking gear loadout for $500 or maybe a little less. Now, the reason I, I hesitated to do this is because you do make some sacrifices if you start cutting back on the amount of money that you're spending. But I give it a shot and the letter pack link is in the description so you can see overall how I came to this figure and this overall loadout is just under $500. So for the pack, what I started with, I still enjoy the RI Flash, but I wanted something with a little bit more capacity. And so I looked at the Mass Drop uh, Granite Gear X60. And that pack has a 35 pound capacity, but it's overall 60 liters. And so if you're first starting and you're getting uh, budget products, they tend to be bulkier, and so you're gonna need a bigger pack to kind of hold all of that uh, room. The overall base weight for this entire loadout is about 15 pounds, a little over. You'll see in the letter pack link, which I think is fairly reasonable. Now the Mass Drop X60, I've seen uh, in action before on the trail. I've never used it myself, um, but it's one of those things where it looks like a high quality piece of gear. Now I'm a big fan of the Costco quilts uh, for what they are. Now. For this loadout, I recommended two Costco quilts because if you stack them, you get a better warmth rating. Those are only $20. You may have to wait till they appear in Costco again, or if you wish, you can purchase them at Amazon. But of course, they're more expensive because capitalism <laughs> and they're not readily available anymore. Um, but if you wait uh, till I think uh, later this summer or early fall, you'll see them appear in Costco for $20 uh, typically per uh, Costco quilt. They especially go heavily on sale, or they have in the past few years, around Black Friday, so around November time is when you really will see them. But if you purchase two, that's $40, and you can stack them and get fairly uh, low. The only drawback for the Costco quilts is that they're a little shorter for guys like me, and they're sewn through baffles, and so that's why stacking them, you might want to um, shift them off center of the stitches so you make sure you get a comfortable rating. I recommended a foam pad because if you go to the ground, you can use it. If you are in the hammock, <laughs> you can use a pad in the hammock. Um, it's the Thermores uh, Z-Sole foam pad. It's a good value for what it is, uh, decent R rating. Uh, and this is one of the sacrifices uh, in terms of bulk that you'll add to your pack because foam pad just doesn't compress or get as small as some of the air pads out there. For you ground dwellers, the Perea Outdoors uh, mesh tent is phenomenal for what it is. Subaru Josh has it, I've seen it set up, and it for, for the price and the overall weight, it is amazing. So what I would do is I would pair a Perea Breeze mesh tent along with the uh, Sanctuary Silt Tarp of your choice, and you get a really nice all-in-one package. Now, of course, you just pick up some cheap tent stakes from Amazon. I love the Titanium Shepherd Hooks uh, tent stakes. And the nice thing about this package, if you get a breeze mesh tent along with a sanctuary silt tarp, is that you can you can kind of bridge into a hammock setup if you wish. If you get that sanctuary uh, silt tarp, it's a, a decent hammock tarp. It doesn't have um, some of the features or bells and whistles of some of the other tarps, but it's decent for what it is. And that's actually the pairing that uh, Super Josh has used for a long time, so I, I feel pretty confident in recommending it. If you're looking purely at a hammock setup, I did offer as well. Um, tarp, the penny pincher tarp from UGQ is just fantastic. As well as hammock, I recommend the Dream Hammock Freebird, which is a netless hammock. And so you can also pick up a cheap uh, 360 bug net where you uh, enter from the bottom and kind of zip it up or close it up to get into your hammock that protects you from bugs in the summer or warmer months. Tree straps, just pick up some cheap uh, tree straps from Amazon. Uh, people like Ripstop by the Roll, for example, will sell those as well, and they can kind of be your, your uh, 
place for getting those hammock related items. For your extra clothing, so things like a fleece, most people will have a fleece at home. Go ahead and bring that, that's free. Gloves, hat, you can get a baseball cap. Most people will have gloves for the winter time anywhere. All free. The only thing that's extra will be your rain gear, and I'll still recommend the Frog Tog, if you're looking to save money, the Frog Tog's ultralight rain suit, which is a uh, pant and a jacket. Just be careful because it is more of a budget piece of gear. It tends to be uh, less forgiving when it comes to going off trail or rubbing against branches. If you're just using it for rain and hiking, uh, you should be fine. Uh, but anything super rough, I wouldn't uh, trust the ultralight rain suit. Similarly, with the regular clothing that you're wearing for uh, hiking or for sleeping in, uh, typical shorts and t-shirts in the summer, depending of course on where you are, or longer sweatpants will work. Um, socks, my personal favorite, I've mentioned so many times now, is the right socks will help avoid blisters. Um, but you can actually go even cheaper than that. You have all these items already in your house. Uh, the only things that I would want to remember is that you make sure uh, no cotton and stay to things like polyester or any synthetic clothing. Uh, weigh your clothing, figure out which one is lightest and which one you want to bring, uh, but you will need sleep clothing and at least two pairs of socks uh, for hiking. Stay synthetic, it ends up being cheaper overall. This video is sponsored by Right on Trek and they're a small company that they've just started out and what they're doing is they're, they've created a hike planning platform for you so that you can plan out your longer multi-day hikes. One of the great things that they have in terms of features is that you can actually share your hikes with uh, other members of the hiking community, your family, your friends, as well as view other hikers' plans. Now the great thing is that it's free and it allows you to plan uh, for multi-day backpacking trips on some major US trails that everyone's aware of, like the PCT, uh, the AT, and the JMT, the John Muir Trail as well as a lot of different other trails on there. Now you can do different things like plan out your daily trip itinerary, uh, look at your daily mileage if you'd like, overall elevation profile, which is fantastic. You can even plan out your campsites, points of interest on the trail, and even create a resupply plan if you need to. So check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment down below. I actually made a mistake on one of my trips and forgetting my Human Gear Duo. So my recommendation to use is a disposable plastic spoon just be careful you don't melt it. But another option is if you're able to stop to a McDonald's at some point, get a McFlurry because they have a longer handled disposable spoon that you can use and that's completely free. It costs the price of a McFlurry, which is delicious. Uh, and this, uh, it has a hollow end and it's long handled and it's, I mean, it's hard to beat. You also have different options for stove. You can make the DIY cheap uh, alcohol stove if you'd like. I've shown that before, it's here in the cards. Uh, the BRS stove, is ridiculously cheap and light and it's hard to beat that option um, as well as you can get a cheap cook kit from Amazon for under $14. For navigation you can get a headlamp. Uh, I, I recommend the Foxelli brand of headlamps. It's super cheap. It's nothing special um, but it will, it will make do. Your map and compass. Uh, compass you can get a, a reasonable one from Amazon. This is the one to be careful with. Um, I recommend looking at something that uh, you can if you can go to a sporting goods store and actually see the compass, see what it's like, if it's flimsy, if it's reliable, uh, just because that's something you don't really want to uh, mess with a whole lot. But lots of options exist for uh, cheaper compasses. Water purification, you have the Sawyer kits, which I would recommend. Since we're looking at more budget items, go ahead with the Sawyer Mini. Just be aware that you do have to back flush that more regularly and the flow rate may frustrate you. Um, if you're able to have a little bit more money, the Sawyer Squeeze is one of the ways to go. Smart water bottles is what I'd use instead of Nalgene's. You light and weight and it's cheap and you can reuse those bottles after every trip. I mean, I, I do. Toiletries, a lot of this stuff is stuff you can get at home like that's free. So like your, your toothpaste, your hand sanitizer, your wipes, your toilet paper, bug spray, sunscreen, floss, that kind of thing is free from home. The only thing is that I would spend money on are a backpacker's trowel. And yes, it pains me to choose one of these cheaper options for backpack and travels, but the Coughlin's backpack and travel will work. It's only six ounces. It's, you know, what you think of when you see a trowel is that bright orange color and uh, it will work for you. Pack towel, 
you can go ahead and use something cheap at home. Most people will have a shop towel that's microfiber of some kind, just cut out a small one, or you can get a cheap one for about $10 on Amazon. Of course, you'll need food, water, and fuel. Those are definitely consumable things um, you can keep up, but we also have some extras on this gear list as well. Uh, I continue to recommend the outdoor products line of stuff sacks, and then pick up a, uh, a hank, I don't know what you call it, a section of paracord. This is pretty cheap. You can get it for about $10 for 100 feet. Uh, you can use this for things like uh, guy lines, for a bear line if you really need to in a pinch. Um, the only thing to note about paracord, and this is one of the compromises I had to make, is that you'll get a lot of stretch um, with paracord. Um, so, it, I mean, it, it will work, um, but just be aware that it may not work as well as a Dyneema-based uh, form of cordage. Plastic bags, so things like a trash bag liner, uh, just a trash bag in general to hold your, your general trash on the outside of your pack typically, uh, are free and you should be able to get those from home. Trekking poles are trekking poles. Uh, there are some differences between them, but if you want something to support your, you know, help with your knees and your overall pack weight, how you feel overall, as well as get some upper body uh, strength going on there. The cheapest uh, trekking poles I can find on Amazon are about $8. Just remember, you get a little bit of what you pay for. There comes a point, for me, the sweet spot's about $30 to $40, but since this is a budget list, $8 is the cheapest I can find. Um, that could work. If you want to get even cheaper, you can make your own staff, make your own trekking poles uh, that fit your height from uh, wood around. Just make sure you get something that's strong. Now your head net and medical kit. Uh, head net, you probably will have to purchase. There's some cheap ones out there, about $7 or so. Uh, medical kit, repair kit, Typically, a lot of that stuff will come with the things you've purchased uh, if it has a repair kit in it. If not, you can make it up from home. Mostly duct tape, bandages, uh, medications, and I've gone over that first aid uh, kit before, at least what I uh, carry. For the knife, it's almost impossible to beat the Mora Companion knives. They're tough, they're rugged, they're light, and they're reliable. And uh, I think you should, if you haven't ever purchased the Mora Companion knife, go ahead and pick one up. You'd be surprised at just how tough and sharp they are. And for something that's not a full tang knife, it, it works. So that's the overall gear list. Hopefully you enjoyed, uh, hopefully it's a good resource for those people out there who are looking for different price points. And that's one reason why I'm starting to put out a lot of these lists is so that people can refer back to them hopefully, or you can share with your friends if it's something you'd consider saying, hey, you're starting backpacking, you can look at these different price points, be it the value, uh, gear list or this $500 gear list, or I've even done, I think a $350 gear list before. Go ahead and check those out. The links to everything are in the description. Let me know what you guys think. Is this something that you would carry? I always try to think about, is this something I would take out into the back country and trust my life with? And the answer is, it depends on where I'm going. <laughs> but overall, this is an, a good starter kit, I think. Thanks once again to our sponsor, Right on Trek for, uh, sponsoring today's video. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.